Welcome to DP Review and Gear Shop. I'm Kate. And I'm Ernie. Let's talk about lenses. Let's! And the camera you have in your hand is the Sigma SD1. We're going to use that to explore why f-stops are so important when it comes to, of course, lens choices. But first, I say we take a look at some of your personal photographs and you can sort of tell us how you worked with depth of field in uh, producing some of those. Absolutely. In photography, aperture, also known as f-stop, refers to the physical size of the hole in your lens. So as well as letting you control the amount of light coming into your camera, aperture also lets you control sharpness in your scene. You can control the mood and impact of your photos and shift it dramatically just by changing your lens or adjusting the f-stop. That's what we'll be talking about today. In this photograph, I just wanted to highlight the face. So I directed the viewer by using a fast wide aperture lens like the 50mm 1.4. If you hear people talking about a fast lens, they mean a lens with a large maximum aperture, which will allow you to direct the viewer's eye to her face. And it created the blurred out background. Conversely, shooting at a small aperture, a large f-stop number, gives you a wide depth of field, meaning that more elements in your scene will be sharp, not just the thing you're focusing on. So shooting at a small aperture makes a lot of sense for landscape photography, where you want everything in the scene to be sharp, like this desert road. In photography, the zone of sharpness is called depth of field. Excellent. And actually, you're going to walk us through a depth of field scenario using these models here. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus right on this car. Then I am going to change the depth of field around that. And we'll just understand what happens in each scenario. OK. OK. Let's do it. And uh, let's see. So I'm ready to shoot. If I select 1.4, a wide aperture, you can see that only the car, which is my point of focus, is sharp. The elements in front of the car are blurred, and so is everything behind it. Okay, interesting. Now I'm going to set it at f16. Okay, and when you're doing that, what is actually happening inside this camera? So when I'm at f16, the aperture is very small. Okay. It's not letting very much light in. Okay, and then 1.4. 1.4, it gets very big. It lets a lot of light into the camera. Got it. Okay. Bigger number, smaller aperture. Yes. Cool. Okay. And uh, let's see, so I'm ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. I got an F16, I'm gonna make, take the first shot. Ooh. Boom. See how in this shot, taken at F16, a small aperture, almost everything in this scene is sharp, not just the car. So the 1.4 brought our view here. Yes. 16 brings our view here. You got it. Okie dokie. You get it. Okay, so I think what's very clear here is that an accurate understanding of depth of field is really key to taking, obviously, quality photographs. Absolutely. You want to understand how to guide the viewer mm. to that place in the picture that you want them to look. Okay? Yeah. So let's do this. Let's get all this camera gear and let's head out into the field so we can really understand depth of field. So this is a perfect environment to really understand and explore and play with our depth of field. Right now I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. Pretty versatile, and in this kind of environment, it would actually really help us to understand depth of field and play with the city behind yeah. Ashley. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so that was F16. Now we're gonna keep on moving the F-stop right to 2.8 so we can kind of cut to the chase and really understand this depth of field thing, so okay? All right, so here we're doing, how you doing, Ashley? Great, thanks. All right, cool. Okay, perfect. That's great. Okay, so we shot at different f-stops, and now we're gonna go take a look at them back at the studio. How'd it go out there? It was a beautiful day. I think we got some great shots. Those were beautiful shots, Ernie. Clearly, if I want maximum flexibility in the lens, I have to get a fast one with a significant f-stop range. Yeah? Yes, that's a safe bet. Absolutely. Thanks, Ernie. You're welcome. When choosing a lens, here are a few things to remember about aperture. In photography, the zone of sharpness is called depth of field. A large aperture, small f-stop number, lets in more light than a small aperture and creates a shallower depth of field. A small aperture, large f-stop number, gives you a wide depth of field, meaning that more elements in your scene will be sharp. Zoom lenses with a large, constant, maximum aperture, while typically more expensive than variable aperture lenses, give the photographer more control over depth of field and how much light enters the camera. Prime lenses offer a wider range of f-stops and are often a more affordable alternative to fast zooms. 
keep up with the latest in photography news, compare products, and connect with other photographers at www.dpreview.com. Then, support the site by making your next purchase from GearShop's highly curated selection of photographic equipment at gearshop.dpreview.com. Those were beautiful shots, Ernie. Clearly, if I want maximum flexibility in the lens, I have to get a fast one with a significant f-stop range. Yeah. Yes, that's a safe bet, absolutely. Thanks, Ernie. You're welcome. Sounds like I've got some lens shopping to do. Check out dpreview.com for tips and tricks, as well as some great gear choices. Keep up with the latest in photography news, compare products, and connect with other photographers at www.dpreview.com. Then, support the site by making your next purchase from GearShop's highly curated selection of photographic equipment at gearshop.dpreview.com.